welcome to another vlog and this time around I'll be providing some tips on photographing birds in the garden. It's mid-February and the rain has finally stopped and there's a touch of spring in the air. Now February and going through into early March is actually the best time of the year to photograph birds in your garden. Natural food is still quite scarce in the environment and the males particularly uh, are very vibrant at this time of the year coming into the breeding season. Additionally, there's no leaves on the trees, so the birds are uh, quite easy to photograph. Um, so the question that I'm going to try to answer in this vlog is how to take beautiful natural images of wild birds in what is predominantly a man-made environment, a garden. Well, the single most important part of taking a beautiful image of a bird is light. Um, and in the morning, early in the morning or in the evening are ideal, or when it's slightly overcast. What we don't want is direct sunlight um, reflecting off the birds. Many of these birds, passerines, uh, which are basically the songbirds and perching birds, uh, they comprise uh, almost half of all bird species, and they're the ones that we predominantly see in our gardens. But most of these birds have patches of white on them, and if the white reflects uh, direct sunlight, um, the image uh, will reveal no detail in that area of the plumage of the bird. So each garden has areas that, um, you know, look better in either the morning or in the evening light. And this garden here, my garden, um, this pear tree, for instance, you know, catches the morning light and it isn't so good uh, in the evening when um, most of the trees are backlit. The birds would also be backlit, but my preference is for to have the warm morning light um, directly lighting up the hole or the front of the bird. So once you identify an area in your garden where the light is good, the next question to ask is about the backdrop to the image that you're planning. Um, now, I find that um, evergreens and dark green bushes um, provide an unpleasant background and the color, the green color in, in photographs generally and the way the camera deals with them is too overpowering for many of the subtleties that we find in the plumage of uh, garden birds. So I'd prefer a, a, a bearer, a more minimal uh, type of background and that's always provided by deciduous and shrubby plants uh, in winter with no leaves and I find that light reflects off uh, those types of bushes beautifully. Things, um, plants such as um, acers, uh, uh, Japanese uh, maples, um, hawthorn, I have an old dead um, plum tree which I have left uh, to run its course and the lichen on the branches of that tree provide beautiful um, subtle warm light when um, lit by uh, that rising sun. So focus on either uh, areas of your garden that have deciduous planting or if you're thinking of planting your garden always buy natural uh, plants for the area uh, or country uh, that you live in. For instance, in Ireland here, elder, hawthorn, um, uh, holly wouldn't be a favourite of mine because of that green colour for photographing birds, but obviously it's good for its berries and a natural food source for the birds. Now an excellent way of finding out what that backdrop is going to look like in your photograph is to set the uh, camera aperture to a very low setting, 2.8 or f4 or f5.6 and just scan your camera around and you'll see light and dark areas highlighted in that bokeh and you'll also see what types of colours are, are going to be represented and effectively this will make up the vast majority of the frame of your image and the bird uh, a smaller area. Now the second consideration is uh, where do you want the bird to perch? because this is one of the great advantages of wildlife photography in a garden. Uh, you have the advantage of trying to determine where the bird is going to land and where your photograph is. So in effect, it's a form of modeling. Um, you can't obviously offer uh, a direction to the bird, but you can prompt it to land in a certain area. And you do that by placement of the actual feeders. 
So obviously you don't want a photograph of the bird on the feeder. So for example, if I wanted an image of a bird uh, on uh, this branch here, um, I'd place the feeder about here. And I would hope then that if one bird was feeding on the feeder, that about one foot or two foot away, the next bird queuing up for the feeder would land there and would be perfect for my photograph. So let's assume that the image is set up. The feeders are placed in the right location. Um, you've identified where you want the bird to land. You've uh, pictured uh, the image within the frame of your camera and how the bokeh will look um, at a uh, lower aperture. So the next thing is how do you conceal yourself uh, from the bird? And this can be done in a number of ways. With some birds that come into a garden, they're actually quite approachable. So a hide isn't necessary. Um, some birds will come right up to the kitchen door. So you can just sit inside your kitchen door and place the feeder there, if that works. Um, most gardens will have a shed. So I've actually used a couple of sheds in the garden here and just leave the door open and maybe a little bit of scrimming and sit quietly. And that's the key thing, just to sit quietly. Birds will approach you if you sit quietly. Now, it is very handy to have a hide. Um, particularly when approaching some of the larger birds, um, such as the crows. Magpies are very wary, and as are uh, woodpeckers. And I'm lucky enough to have a greater spotted woodpecker regularly visiting this feeder. Now, it's late in the evening, and I'm going to leave this part of the vlog uh, where it is for now. And we'll come back in the morning, and we'll try to catch that woodpecker on the feeder or on the branch here. Uh, and, and hopefully we get a little bit of good morning light. So come back and join me then.
looks like a reflector. And if the woodpecker lands on the snaking branch of my pear tree here, the underside will be beautifully lit. The sun has risen about five minutes ago. And it's just illuminating the upper branches of the tree. It hasn't yet warmed that branch that I hope to photograph the woodpecker on. This light's gonna last 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. My window of opportunity will be gone. I've been in the hide now for about an hour and a half. The light is really too harsh now. And I took a two minute break, went back into the house, was sitting at the kitchen table, looked out, woodpecker lands on the bird tree. He headed off quite quickly, so I ran back into the hide. Half an hour later, still no sign. I think I'm a Kit Kat man, so I'm going to leave it at that for today. And I'm going to leave the vlog there, um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'll leave you with um, a few videos I took uh, last week, and a couple of images of that woodpecker on the pear tree. So thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content. And next time round, I'm going to be photographing the courtship dance of the most wonderful bird, the great crested green. So join me then.